Hi guys, Charlie Tango One coming at you here with a different video. Um, this one is what I term as a. Um, hang on a minute, I don't think that's doing anything, is it? Oh, yes, it is. Sorry. Um, this is what I term as a, a walking lead. Now, I do them 60 inches long overall. Um, uh, before I start. Um, working on them. Now the first thing I do, this one um, is three quarters of an inch wide and I've got some narrow ones because some people they've got little Jack Russells and they want narrower ones so where are we? I've got I've got these little ones here they're a little bit narrower um, they are in fact uh, five and a half inch and I've got some five eight ones these are three quarter. Now um, first thing I do is once I've cut it off 60 inches I then um, mark it up so I mark this up at this end uh, 5 inches or 6 inches because you're going to turn that over onto there um, for your ring um, now if you do want a, a stopper on there um, you can you can do so, but it'll be like a wing nut uh, to slide down. It'll come either side, so because it's, it's a flat leather, and uh, at least you can slide it down that way. Right, and the first thing I'm going to do this is um, I've marked them out. That's five inches. I turn it up the other end, and you now go to. Um, uh, let me tell it in because I think it's a little bit too far out, isn't it? Let's try that. Uh, I measure from here to the end, from the end, uh, yeah, from the end, down here, 14 inches. Then I come back two inches, and I have two inches on the end there. So that's going to be folded over like that to that line, and hence you've got your handle loop. Um, you can go big on the loop, but the trouble is by doing that, you're reducing the length of your lead. Um, and you've got to take into account it might be a large dog so by the time it's gone round its neck you've reduced the lead anyway. Um, but as I say these are purely for if you're walking your dog. They're, they're not really they're not really good um, obviously for training the dog not with a ring. Not this type anyway. I've got a training lead um, uh, which, I, which I produce and uh, I, I supply a gun dog trainer down in Cornwall my good old mate Chris Upton so um, there we go without further ado this is uh, I do the I do it in processes so that um, you're not getting too bored now first I'm going to do is edge it now to edge it I'm only going to do the bits I don't do these bits where it's going to glue together because you're you take you're then shouldering it off all right so I go from the line now it's quite rough because this is the underside and come out there. I then go to the other side of the line and you can hear it scraping into it because uh, as I say it's the underside of the, the leather not the flesh side um, you know the other, that's what we term as the flesh side and that's the underside so I'll drag that down there like that I'll, sh I'll show you this one and once we've done that um, we go on to the next stage but the reason I edge this off is because when you've got this round and I take it to the 5 inch mark that's as far as I take it to excuse me, my nose is itching again turn it over do the flesh side Right from the top, right the way down, because this is a flesh side, so you haven't got to worry about leaving bits. That sounds obviously a lot smoother because it is the flesh side. Carry right the way down here to the end. I'll only show you on this one, you're not going to be looking at three or four of them that I'm doing. Because um, these ones I'm producing here is for um, 
a, a charity come um, rescue group of um, uh, English. Uh, hang on, sorry, it'll come to me in a moment. Let's turn this round. Oh, two good people. I'm, I recently joined, but these they want. They're, they're buying them actually, but I'm going to do them at a very cheap rate for them because. They're going to put them on their little site in the hope of selling them um, to these people that rescue dogs, etc. Um, uh, God almighty, isn't it funny when you get mine goes blank? Oh, Golden Retriever Rescue. That's what it is, Golden Retriever Rescue. Um, they, they do rescue other dogs as well. Um, and um, I just recently joined him as a home, uh, well, not inspector, but you're just a home check type thing, you know, to see that they've got adequate room for the dog, that it can't get out of the garden. Um, and uh, that is about it, really. It's uh, that's all my involvement in it, really, is, other than collecting the dogs, because a lot of them come from Romania, etc. Um, and um, they're yeah, golden retriever, and the ones I come across, because we um, we was actually um, transferring some over to to the new owners. Uh, one of them come all the way from Wales. And the other one come from northern Scot, uh, northern uh, North Yorkshire. Um, you know, travel all the way down. So obviously they're genuine, genuine people to travel all that way. But um, I don't know what they do regarding booking one or, or whatever. I think they get a video and then they reply to the um, the two good people that run it, Maggie and Louise. And um, it goes from there. So um, my job ends once I've done an assessment of the of the house, of the house check. You know, and I report it back, but it's not my decision as to, as to whether to say yay or nay. So, so there you go. And they want to put these on the website. Um, these mainly have been um, the idea of making these for them was when we get the dogs come from abroad because they travelled across land they don't come across sea or by plane um, and uh, the vehicle turns up and it could be <laughs> midnight or something like that well I just go down to the kennels and we um, that's it we unload them out of the vehicles put them in the kennels and that's what they needed these leads for it's a because um, they didn't have enough leads to grab the dogs um, because obviously, when you think about it, they've been living on the streets. So, um, when, they, uh, when they're living on the streets, if you don't have them on a lead, um, they will bolt. Simple as that, they will bolt. Now, the other thing I do, um, I just might be out of camera shot for a little bit, but the other thing I do is I actually... Um, Thinning these down, which I've already got the uh, strip of um, set for, I like so. Uh, that's the end for the ring, and this is the end for the handle. I only do the end piece, not not both of it. So now I've trimmed that down, and because this is a natural colour, what you call flesh, natural colour, I stain it down, and I'm using a what they call a light tan and it and it brings them down oh as I've taken them indoors but it's a lovely colour um I like it and um uh, there there are some um, I've got some up on Facebook I've put up there um so if you want to have a look you you're more than welcome then I'll just get hold of this put that back for a minute uh get hold of this and um where are we I want to be in shot don't I
Oh, come on, get out there. That's it. Just bring that down. So we feathered the edge, so to speak. Uh, you can see there that that's all I've done just on the end. And that way when it's folded over to there, onto this, this piece here, it will go onto there like that. And it just it feathers down better. At least you know don't you're not you're not gonna keep catching it because I do put a stitch over there where when I start so um it doesn't lift but but bear in mind it's also glued and it's a tough glue I use so um, don't have to worry too much about that I'll do the other end there and once I've done that I'm just waiting for my metal work to turn up um, and uh, I've run out of that die so I had to last minute order it so uh, I ordered that last night with the order that I placed because I thought, well, they haven't sent that off yet. So what ideal chance is I phoned them up and said, look, can you add that to it, which they've done. Yeah, my supply is very good like that, you know, they can they can do it at a drop of that if I say, well, I want it tomorrow. Or I'll pay a bit more postage, but I get it. I'll get it the next day. So <clears throat> there we go. Without further ado. Um, <coughs> right, bring I'll bring you back. you back on the next stage. There you go. So, we uh, we die, and that's just turned up. When we we metal work, so I can get cracking, so I can do both both types of lead if I wish. Now, one for the dog uh, gun dog training, and one for the uh, rescue centre. Now, um, I don't like to waste anything really, so. Um, this is all the stuff from the edging um, that, that I've done and I'm thinking you know it, it, <laughs> that look pretty but uh, can anyone guess what I use that for no well I'll tell you what I use it for can you hear that blackbird singing outside you probably can in the distance <coughs> excuse me well I save all that up, and when it comes nesting season, which is now, I just leave this outside near my bird table, and they take all this away and they build their nests with it. So it serves a purpose, and they can go and get some moths and feathers to to finish it off. So that's the reason why I keep that. Not a lot of people know that as it happens. <laughs> right now, what I'm doing on, onto these leads now, I'm going to go on to. Um, Bring it up a little bit nearer so you can see. I put some in one of these um, dishes. Uh, where are we? Now I'm going to start with a little thin one first because some people want these little leads for Jack Russell's, would you believe? So, as you see, I've already edged them and I've feathered them off, etc. And I find the easiest way to do this is to put it in a tank submerge it in a tank so that's what I do um, I just dip it in there and it because it, it soaks in very quick um, what I do is uh, it doesn't drip everywhere so I just do that when I can bear with me just keep it going through fold it over where necessary It looks like I'm doing it all cock-handed and everything, but it soaks in so quick that um, it doesesn't have time to drip. <laughs> see, all oh, that little bit's there. I don't know if you'll see it. No, it's gone too quick. But you see little bubbles coming, forming. Well, all that is, is that's where it's... Uh, uh, see it dried already. It's unbelievable where it soaks it in. So that's that gets the dye in there, and then I treat it with something something else. Some the balm that I have over here. I, I knock my own up as well. I've just knocked some more up in in this one. Let's let's hook this up somewhere. Oh, here we go. 
I've got, I've got a little hooks here. Yeah, this this balm here, after I've put it all together, I just knocked that up myself. Now that's a, I don't know, <laughs> that tin, what I use that tin for, or the wife did, was a, it's an air scent perfume thing, a candle, you know, with um nice smelly wax and that in. Well, I've put some beeswax in there, and I'm, ju I'm just going to knock some more up later on. Um, and I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put some, uh, this time, I'm not going to use Neat's foot oil. I'm going to use a bit of um, turps, turpentine, because there's the, the traditional uh, furniture polish that's got the, the original turpentine in it from the tree. It smells lovely. Um, so I'm going to try, try that on that on the next batch there. It's only a small jam jar I've got of it, so don't take long to knock it up. Right, that's that one done. Rub it in on again, and I that, as I do, because I'm going to get two of these, these little ones going. And I say, by the time I've dinked these six or so, um, this will be ready to... Uh, that's it. This will be ready um, to actually um, stick stick the ring on and uh, stick the handle down and uh, then I can I can just put some of that wax on there to protect it. It uh, does help if that bloody bowl stays there. I don't know if you can see that very well, but let's just bring it in for a second and see what, see what we get there. Well, if you take a look at that, as that makes, as that goes through there, as it's coming out here, I've got my hand in here somewhere, as it's coming out of there, no, no it's not. I'm just trying to get it right for you. Yeah, as it's coming out, out of the tank here, you'll see bubbles that I'll show you. So look out for the bubbles. If you can see them, can you? It's where the air is coming out of the leather. Let's take this back out because you, you know, we're not going to get used to that. That's it. Put that out there, that one can go there. And that's because I stopped it, isn't it? Yeah, that's silly man. Yeah, I'm surprised how quick that, you know this does actually um soak it up. I'm just going to go through it again like because I was taking my time. I could see it was going a bit um, light. So i say this is easier than using a dobber or all that other stuff. Just put myself some gloves on. Um, that's it. A couple of them does it. And that one up as well. Right, that's the, uh, the half inch ones for the... Um, how do I do these? I've got two three quarter ones I'm going to do. So, anyway, that's like watching paint dry, isn't well, it? So, back here. I'll dyed. bring you back on the next stage. And uh, okay, treated, so. rings put on, stitched up. Um, so there you go. I thought that this this completes the um, the the process of making one of these slip leads. Let's just try and bring it in a bit so you can see. I've got to keep dropping the camera down to do it. There we go. That's that's the rings, and uh, it's just double round on itself with a handle. And um, well, there you go. That's a. Uh, 
an experience for you, isn't it? Which way has it got to go? That way? No, it's got to go this way, isn't it? Okay, so, without further ado, uh, I'll catch you on the next one. Cheerio.